Hi, this is Gilly, Radio Prepper. This video is about the PRC-350 or RT-350 by itself, a military portable radio. It's not really a man pack, it's smaller than that, and that's the advantage of this radio. It covers 36 to 56 megahertz, so only the 6 meter band for us uh, amateur radio operators, and it outputs 2 watts. While this is not a whole lot, I was very surprised at the results. And that's using the battle whip antenna that you see here, which is pretty darn short for six meters. Now this is the radio itself and the battery. Well, this is not a battery because uh, those batteries are NICAD batteries and it's 15 volts. And the original batteries today are pretty unreliable. So. What you have is a cassette here into which you can put C-cell batteries. Now the problem is that uh, it's hard to find NICAD C-cell batteries and the modern batteries uh, have a little bit too much voltage because I think there are 14 of them in here so I'm going to refurbish this to use 18650 cells, four of them which should come to uh, 16, a little bit more than 16 volts. Uh, it's uh, 4.2 volts per cell. You set the uh, frequency with these uh, coding wheels here and it's on 51500. The spacing is uh, 25 kilohertz. The radio has a, an off on off button which also includes a whisper mode, a, a squelch on and a squelch off mode. On top of the radio you have two audio sockets and a sort of mini BNC connector for an external antenna and you can find adapters for this to a BNC. This is where the antenna is attached and this rotates all around. You can see here the uh, different modes of operation off, whisper, loud and noise on which means squelch off. The battery case plugs in uh, to the bottom here, is attached with these clamps and uh, you can also find adapters here to use a power supply. And although it's 15 volts, I think it would work fine with a uh, well-charged car battery, which opens up uh, some possibilities for a mobile installations. These radios are pretty inexpensive and you can find them for about $120 in England. Now, of course, today they don't really compare favorably with modern handheld radios because this can do a whole lot more than this. But uh, this one is pretty indestructible. You could probably run over this radio with your car. So maybe for uh, limited applications uh, within a group, uh, this could be a good solution. But you have to consider also that these radios are pretty old and uh, they're not going to last forever. Now before we get into the battery pack build and more testing, let's have a look at my first contact and uh, I was very, very surprised. It was pre-arranged but uh, you'll see these radios work. Ok, euh, ma merci Roland. Un instant, je regarde parce que j'ai un problème de volume là. J'ai très très peu de volume, hein, donc j'entends à peine. Hein. Un petit instant, je vais regarder euh, si je peux trouver la cause. Alors, je vais changer de, de combiné. Hein, je vais changer de combiné. Euh, euh, un petit instant, merci. Roland, Roland, F6EXG de F4 Whisky, bravo Yankee. Ok, bien reçu. Hein. Ben, je pense que c'est la tonalité euh, CTCSS de 150 Hz euh, des appareils militaires donc, qui sert à ouvrir le squelch euh, sur ces radios. Hein. Ah oui, c'est possible, c'est possible. Et moi, comment vous me recevez là J'ai mis une bande passante de 10 kHz. Là, très très bien, hein, très très bien, ça passe très fort. Évidemment, je n'ai pas de, de S-mètre. Hein. 
mais euh, c'est définitivement du 5 en tout cas. Hein. Ce qui m'étonne bien d'ailleurs que, que ça marche parce que j'ai une antenne qui doit faire à peu près euh, 70 cm de long, euh, sans contrepoids, donc euh, <rire> c'est relativement surprenant. Hein. Ok, super, hein, très très bien. Ça doit faire combien de kilomètres à peu près Un kilomètre à peu près. Ah oui, très très bien, hein, très très bien. Je suis agré agréablement surpris, hein, je dois dire. Hein. Vu la taille de la radio et la taille de l'antenne, euh, ça me surprend beaucoup, hein, mais je suis très content. Hein. Bon, en tout cas, merci beaucoup, hein, parce que je voulais vraiment tester cette radio et je ne savais pas comment elle allait euh, se comporter. Hein. Je l'avais essayé évidemment chez moi entre deux appareils, mais bon, ça ne veut rien dire. Hein. Euh, mais là, je suis content de voir que ça fonctionne euh, convenablement. Hein. Bah, si les militaires ont choisi cette, cette bande, c'est que pour des lésions tactiques euh, courte distance, c'est ce qui marchait le mieux. Donc, euh, alors, ça marche bien. Pour le battery pack, j'ai essayé de utiliser un de ces, mais the springs don't hold enough pressure to make a good contact with the batteries so I'm going to make just a pack with four 18650 cells and I'm going to solder them. I have a battery management system here which will go inside the battery case and I'm going to use this lead here to connect to the batteries. I'll put some uh, heat shrink tubing over the whole pack. I'll use a little bit of sandpaper to rough up the uh, contacts It helps for the soldering. I need to be uh, pretty quick if I don't want to damage the cells. The schematic is uh, printed on the BMS, but it isn't very clear. Now, no problem with the batteries themselves, but uh, I do have one input somewhere and uh, of course uh, a protected output. All right, time out. I did something really stupid here. I used the wrong battery management system. This one is for Life PO4 batteries, lithium ion phosphate. That's not what I'm using. I'm using lithium ion batteries. You see here the uh, nominal voltage is 3.2 volts per cell. My cell are 3.7 volts nominal. So I really messed up here. Fortunately, I do have another BMS here that uh, should work, but uh, I have to redo the pack and that's not going to be for this video so Now this B- minus here goes to the minus of the battery. I don't know why they have an extra contact. Uh, I'm assuming the C- minus would be charge minus and the plus is taken on the battery pack and the P- minus would be the power minus and if, again the plus is taken on the battery pack so I'm gonna try that but eh, not quite sure. I do get the full voltage when I touch C minus, so that's a good sign. Uh, the other lead is on the uh, plus of the battery pack, but I also get full voltage when I touch the uh, B minus. Actually, I get a little more. So I have two pluses and two minuses. I think the P is for power, that's where the higher voltage is and the C stands for charge and that's the charging lead and uh, we'll see now I'm going to reduce here the heat shrink tubing oh shit ah well good thing I have still a little more all right that's the last piece I have here so I need to be a little more careful I'm not going to risk it any further. That's good enough. I still have a little uh, crack here, but that's fine.
so I labeled the uh, output and input C and P C for charge and P for power I'm guessing well it sure doesn't look great <laughs> I hope I won't have to take that off again but uh, I don't see what else those connections could be so I think it's going to work that cassette has ample space in it I probably could put two packs inside but uh, one will suffice as you can see here this is meant for uh, C cells 14 of them now I'm going to remove this now in case you're thinking I should keep this and use C cells well I have a second one and this is what we have in the bottom here and it's pretty well made I have to say All right, everything is inside the box, soldered in place. I'm gonna use some uh, packing material to uh, so that it doesn't move. And of course, I'm going to test it before I close the box. It seems to be working pretty well. The duct tape is temporary, of course. It's just until I test it and uh, I test the charging and I add the uh, voltmeter. I like the compactness of the radio. It's much lighter than the uh, PRC351. At least with this cassette, uh, the radio still looks original. Now I might use a lipo pack, 4S lipo pack also, but uh, once again, uh, this looks more original and the uh, input plug here doesn't really, uh, you know, hurt the look. CQ, 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 CQ. Ici, F4 Whiskey, bravo, Yankee. F4 Whiskey, bravo, Yankee. F4 W B Y à vous. And actually it doesn't seem to be drawing any current. I may have to revisit this battery pack. So no luck on charging the battery. Uh, maybe I wired it wrong, I'm not quite sure, but uh, it doesn't work. I might use a LiPo, a 4S LiPo, I don't know. I'll look at it later but what I wanted to do is uh, show you the radio and uh, fortunately it does work and uh, it seems to work really well so now is this going to change the way I see military radios for prepping ah, unlikely they're still big and heavy and uh, just uh, not very uh, well practical I would say again in some uh, limited situations like intergroup communications it might be a good thing to use because the uh, 6 meter FM band is not uh, listened to much by uh, other radio operators but of course uh, it doesn't make much of a difference it's still a heavy uh, you know fairly large radio to uh, carry around but hey I'm having fun and I'm always hoping to learn something along the way and usually I do so I'll take this opportunity to thank my uh, Patreon subscribers for their much needed help Without them, I uh, would have uh, <laughs> much more trouble and difficulties in uh, making these videos and getting uh, gear. Buying stuff I don't need, basically. <laughs> but hey, we all do that, right? If you would like to participate, there is a, a link in the description below. Thank you. This video is long enough. <laughs> you will see the radio again, for sure, in the mountains and uh, portable operations, because I, I do really like it. I mean, it's smaller than the... Uh, PRC351 it's lighter and it can be carried yes uh, if you don't have to carry much else but uh, you know I'm having fun again and that's what matters for now and uh, well it could come handy but who knows have a good one